Psalms 126. The Bible says in verse number one, when the Lord turneth, turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies, good fellowship time, good prayer time. But Lord, we thank you for being a good God. Lord, we're glad you're the best friend we've ever had. We're glad that, Lord, when we fail, you haven't. And God, we're glad that your promises are sure. We're glad, Lord, that uh, 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 you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And God, we're glad to be in the house of God tonight. Now, I pray you'd bless the reading of the Word of God. I pray that you'd bless your people, strengthen them, encourage them. Lord, grow them in the faith. And I certainly pray if there be any amongst us unsaved that tonight would be the night of their salvation. I pray you'd sit down amongst us and help us. And God will bless you for what you do, for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice a few things of these verses as a way of introduction. First of all, I want you to notice the revival. Look in verse number one. The Bible says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Uh, can I say that revival, we ask for revival, and folks uh, mention revival from here to here. We have revival meetings, but if revival truly happens, it comes from God. Uh, you can't work it up. You can't pay it up. You can't do anything for it. God has to send revival. Uh, and in verse number one, it said, The Lord turned again uh, the captivity of Zion. Uh, they were in captivity. They were in bondage. Uh, and God turned that thing around. Uh, aren't you glad that nothing's too hard for God? Uh, aren't you glad that God's still able to send revival? Uh, I know among the super-duper independent Baptists, uh, there's a lot of them say, We can't have revival today. Uh, they don't know the God that I know. Uh, uh, when things look the bleakest, uh, he shines the brightest, uh, and he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Uh, I bless his holy name. We see revival. I want you to know some other things. I want you to notice, if you will, the rejoicing. Verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Can I say when the Lord does something for you, you have something to shout about and sing about. Mm. Uh, I see some folks drag into church, act like God's never done anything for them. They need a little reviving. They need to do what Miss Brandy testified to. They need to go back and remember what God's delivered them from. Uh, that'll help them today. Uh, and if you get to looking around what God's done for you, and get to doing as the old hymn writer uh, wrote, start counting your many blessings, name them one by one, uh, you too will have something to rejoice about. Uh, we see the rejoicing. We see the revival. Now notice the recognition in verse number two. Look what the Bible says. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. When? When God revived them. And God turned things around. And God set them free. Then it says, Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. Notice the heathen recognized what God had done for his people. You know why I can tell you and tell you very emphatically there's not been true revival hit America in over 100 years? Because the heathen don't talk about it. Mm. Oh, we can be in good services, have good meetings, have good campaigns, uh, hear good preaching, hear good singing. Uh, but friends, until it gets out into the neighborhoods, uh, until it gets out into the streets, uh, until the heathen uh, start talking about up there at Emmanuel Baptist Church, uh, God's are doing something. Look what great things God's done for them. Mm. When true revival breaks out, even the animals know. Mm. Go look at what happened in Nineveh. Go look what happened in some of the great revivals in yesteryear. 
They said when the revivals broke out in the coal mines and, and, and during the Welsh revival, even the animals knew that revival had broken out because the men quit cussing and beating them. Hmm? Uh, I want to tell you something. The heathen know when God's in the house. Hmm? Notice, if you will, the reality. Look at verse number three. The Lord hath done great things for us. We are whereof we are glad. If it ever really just sets in on your soul that God's done great things for you, you will rejoice. You'll quit walking on your lower lip. You'll quit walking around acting like, woe is we, woe is me. All he did was forgive you. All he did was save you. All he did is go to prepare a place for you. All he's done has been the friend that sticketh closer than a brother. All he's ever done is give you peace that passes understanding. All he's ever done is in your hour of need show up when everybody else is walking out. Hey, he's been a good God to you and I. We get to feeling sorry for ourselves because we don't live in a house like so-and-so. We don't drive a car like so-and-so. We don't eat like so-and-so. We don't have this. We don't have that. If you got him, you got it all, friend. And that ought to light in on our soul every now and then. Hmm? We see the reality. Notice, if you will, the request. Verse number four. Look what it says. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. You see what had happened in verses 1 through 3. That was wonderful, but they got over it. And now there's a request to turn them again. Can I say something? We are a very forgetful people. We'd have revival, Brother Clint, if we just get to thinking about where God found us and what, we, what life was like when we was lost. Life was like when we had no hope. Yeah. Yes. We'd have revival, Brother Donald, and I know you've only been in this thing about a year and a half. It's almost been in a long time. We'd have a, a revival. We'd, we'd realize what we used to do, and we don't do it anymore because God took it from us. Uh, some, of the, some of the things we used to say and some of the places we used to go and some of the things we used to do, some of you used to not remember the weekends. Mm. But see, you've gotten over it. Now you, you've enjoyed the blessings of God so long you forgot what it's like without God. Hmm. We get to where apathy sets in. We, Brother Brian, almost come to church like we deserve to be here. Hmm. We almost act like we have a right to call upon his name. You realize we don't even get to deserve to even speak his name. But because of the blood of Christ, we who once were without have been made nigh. Are you listening to that middle wall? Petition's been broken down. Uh, and we can come boldly to the throne of grace and call upon him uh, because we can know him as our heavenly father. We can cry, Abba, Father. And he hears and answers prayer. Mm. Notice, if you will, the reaping. Verse number five. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. The Bible speaks a whole lot about reaping what you sow. You don't sow, you won't reap. And we will beat our chest and throw down the gauntlet and scream to the highest note that we are not Calvinist that God hasn't predestinated who's going to heaven and who's going to hell. We say, we don't believe that. But we practice it because we don't take the gospel to folks. You know how God chooses to save them that will believe? Through the word of God. And he expects us to go and take it to them. Well, that went over real good, didn't it? Mm -hmm. see that they that sow in tears shall reap in joy and then we see the rendering look at verse number 6 he that sitteth on the pew and doeth nothing is that what it says <laughs> he that shows up only on Sunday morning and never prays, never reads the Bible, never does anything for Jesus. Is that what it says? 
No, it doesn't say that. It says, He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Verse number 6 is a continuance of verse number 5. It goes into a little bit greater detail. And what it basically is saying, if you're going to ever see any results, you've got to do something. God didn't save us to sit around. God saved us to serve him. And when we put our heart in it and we do serve him, there are results from that. And that's what verse 6 is talking about. Well, I was reading this psalm today. Some of you are about to pass out. I haven't even preached yet. But I couldn't get over the first three words. It says, when the Lord turned again. I got to thinking about those folks in bondage, slaves in captivity. And something touched the heart of God that caused him to move towards them. And so I want to preach for a few minutes tonight. I won't preach long, but I want to preach for a few minutes on what will move God's heart. Boy, if there's every time we need to see God do something, it's today. Man, I, I, I've just given a lot of thought the last few days. Probably a message coming to you soon. On astrology, the end times. I preach on it every now and then. I'll never forget I preached on the time of Jacob's trouble. Trouble's coming. I preached a few months after that trouble's here uh, preach all kinds of messages from time to time on the end times I preach that trouble's coming when Obama was running for office and we got elected I preach trouble's here <laughs> trouble reared back up now he's taking credit for everything that's going on right now hey trouble go back to where you came from we're doing just fine without you okay but listen I've just been paying attention to all things going on. I, I don't know everything about the end times, neither do you. Half of us have not been told. And there's a lot of things that the Pharisees thought they knew about God, but when he showed up, they didn't even recognize him. There's a lot of folks think they got it all cut and dry with the end times, but I will say this. When the Antichrist shows up, by the way, hallelujah, the church is already gone. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. People all the time trying to figure out the Antichrist. Well, you can hang around and find out if you want to. It doesn't matter to me. I'm out of here. It doesn't matter. Huh? But I do know this. The first 42 months of his reign, he's going to set up a one world government, a one world religion. He's all about universalism. And by the way, the term Catholic means universal. And you find in Revelation 17, it's talking about the Catholic faith when he talks about the great whore. And he's going to judge her. And knows that uh, 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 in glory, we're going to praise the Lord for bringing her to naught. And for years, everybody assumed that the one world religion is going to be Catholicism. Well, they're falling by the wayside. The fastest growing religion in the world is Muslim or Islam. Hmm? Can I say, you can't go anywhere without them being there. Amen. We got a mosque here in Florence. They don't call it that. Because uh, they know a bunch of rednecks would, would go up there and demand them to close it. Uh, listen, I'm just trying to... I'm, I'm going somewhere, but... I, I was thinking about them taking another step. We've always preached there being one world government, a one world religion. Well, did you ever think about this? How about one gender? They're petitioning to teach it in our schools. One gender, one race, one everything. It goes far beyond just government and religion. Hmm? There'll be no distinctions about anything. You realize that red horse, I mean that black horse in, in, in Revelation deals primarily with civil rights. And since uh, 1962, we've been dealing with civil rights in America. And no matter how many laws they pass, it doesn't get better, it gets worse. 
You ever think about that? There's always an upheaval. Mm -mm. And we're getting to a place in America where they've uh, uh, made it so lawful you can't say anything that anybody else finds offensive. Mm -mm. It doesn't matter if it's uh, red or white or black or blue or whatever you call it blue. If that offends somebody, you're going to go to jail for it. Do you realize in Europe right now, in England... They will not allow you to get medical help if you are de deemed a sexist, racist, uh, 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 or anything that uh, anybody else has been offended with. You can't even get medical help over there. You say, what's happening? It's all going to be everywhere for long. Hmm. Used to, we wouldn't even preach against homosexuals. Now you can't even preach against gender anymore. Huh? It's not too tough when they're born to figure out if they're a boy or a girl. And can I say something? They've got to be taught out of their gender to become gender neutral. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anywhere, and it's not in my notes. I'm just telling you, friend, look around. Somebody better go get the Lord. If we're ever going to see true revival, somebody has to wake up and smell the coffee. This world's not getting better, it's getting worse. Second Timothy 3 is coming to pass right before our eyes. They call that which is good evil and that which is evil good. Uh, my dear friends, we're in a mess. Uh, that even in America, they're, they're heralding socialism. Sure. They're calling us capitalist pigs who believe in democracy. You say, oh, that'll never happen. Bernie Sanders spoke before 17,000 idiots yesterday in Washington. I'm glad you made it out. It's taking hold. So anyway, that's a message coming to you soon. I got to thinking about what will move God's heart. What's it going to take to get God on the scene? Doesn't God see all this mess? Yeah, God sees it. He wonders if we do. They had to be in captivity 70 years before they got God's attention. So what's it going to take? Can I say, first of all, it's going to take sorrow. A sorrowful spirit about what's going on. Listen, they had been held captive. You know why we don't see God move in America nowadays? Because we're held captive People are held captive. I mentioned a minute ago by apathy. People are so numb to everything. They don't care. It's all you can do to get people to come to church. And people come to church, they sit down and relax because it's the first time all day their mind's not being infiltrated with something. And while they're here, they're not here to worship. They're not here to hear from heaven. They're not here to find something that's going to cause their life to change. They're just taking a break. Amen. That apathy is taking over our churches. Now you might as well say amen. I've been preaching and caught people uh, filling out their grocery list while I'm preaching. Because they haven't had time all day long. I'm thankful people quit taking naps on me because I threatened to sit in their lap while they was doing it. <laughs> but people are held captive by apathy. People are held captive by their activities. Everybody is running everywhere all the time. I'm guilty too. I, I mean, we just run, 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 run. And nobody takes time to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We're held captive by that. I know I'm old. When I was a kid, you had three main TV channels and you had UHF, which is channel 19, that came in some of the time. But every night, they'd play the national anthem and TV shut off. Now you got 250 channels going 24-7 and you still can't find anything to watch. We're bound by apathy. We're bound by activities. We're bound by the almighty dollar. 
Hmm? Folks worship George Washington. Hmm? Used to be a time, Brother Ray, you know this as well as I do, people would take their vacations for revival meeting. Now people take a vacation about every Sunday. They don't care about church. God will understand. I don't think God does. That's why he doesn't move towards us. In order to see God move, it's going to take sorrow. We're going to uh, 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 see God's heart move to us when there's a heaviness of spirit. Uh, when we look around and we see the mess we're in and it bothers us. Uh, we get heartbroken for sinners. Boy, it does my heart good. It does my heart good as a pastor. Uh, listen, you know, I preach uh, a lot of places. I go a lot of places, uh, and I hear a lot of prayer requests. And everywhere I go, uh, uh, you hear about people with cancer, and you hear about uh, kids that are sick, and you hear about this uh, 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 operation, that operation. But most uh, churches, most of God's people, don't cry out for God to save folks. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, most of our prayer requests uh, are for lost people. What a blessing, my dear friends. Uh, Amen. Until we get heartbroken for sinners, God's not going to move towards us. Can I say, we're going to get sorrowful. We're going to be heavy in our spirit for what's going on. Heartbroken for sinners. And then we've got to show humility. We've got to admit to God, we're in the mess that we're in because we've turned our back on him. Mm. If you go and see every great move of God throughout Israel's history is when God's people and God's man would confess to God that them and their fathers had turned their back on God. Mm. It's going to take sorrow to move the heart of God. Can I say it's going to take sowing Verse number five, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Can I say, it's going to take the sowing of tears toward God. The psalmist said, put thou my tears in a bottle. Are they not in thy book? Uh, do you realize that every born again believer, God has a tear bottle for you in heaven? I wonder how many times Brother Phil, he has to go by and shake it, see if there's anything in it. You know when God used to move? when the altars were stained with tears. When mamas and daddies and grandpas and grandmas uh, 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 were in the altar begging God to save their children and grandchildren. You'd think after 15 years this carpet would have been dry rotted by the tears by now. It looked pretty good to me. It's going to take some sewing tears toward God we're going to have to sow time with God how much time do you make for God in your life brother Bob most people don't even talk to him unless they have a need in their life you know what help your day on your way to your job while you're out working in the yard or no matter where you find yourself just talk to him Hmm. So, Lord, thank you for this day. Whoa, it's a beautiful day. Boy, the sun was out today, and I was just telling the Lord, boy, it's a beautiful day. Lord, Good. Uh, Good. how much time do you spend talking with him? Hmm. Can I help you some? You don't have to find yourself in an altar on your knees to talk with him. Hmm. How much do you think on him? How much do you deliberate in his word and let him talk to you? So preacher, I'm so busy. Well, if you're too busy for God to have any part in your life, you're too busy. You need to ask God to help you with some of that. Mm. Can I help you with something? I'm just going to be unkind, but hey, I'm here, so might as well. You said 50 years ago when uh, Chrissy Lane came out with that song, you know what they didn't have 50 years ago, Brother Clint? They didn't have mental hospitals like they do today. They didn't have Xanax and all that stuff like they got today for people's nerves are shot. Hmm? 
You know what they didn't have a hundred years ago? They didn't have any of that stuff. You know what they ate? They ate lard. And they survived. They didn't have Planet Fitness on every corner. But you know what they did? They got out and they worked with their hands and they talked to God and they uh, rolled up their shirt sleeves uh, and they uh, 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 realized where their blessings came from. People today are so stressed out. I've said for years, I've said it, I make no apologies for it. The greatest preacher I've ever heard was my granddaddy. But my granddaddy could not pastor today like he pastored then. So he didn't have to deal with the things that people were dealing with. Hmm. Back then, folks had a, a, a place in their heart for God. Now we've got to find place for God. We've got to sow time with God. And I say this, we need to sow trust in God. Well, I listen to the people, and I, I look around at people, and man, we're so shallow. We believe God can take us to heaven, but we don't believe God can get us down the street. We're so worried about whether or not God can answer and God can do this and we got this test and we got this problem and we got this financial thing going on. We got this. You do realize he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, don't you? You do realize he's the great physician. You do realize he is still God. I don't like harping on the fact I had cancer last year, but it was last week that we celebrated a year. And you can just ask her. She's sitting right there. When she told me I had cancer, this was my exact words. It didn't catch God by surprise. It'll be all right. She came home. She was upset. It was on Thursday. You always have ladies meeting because you women aren't any more romantic than us men. You had ladies meeting on Valentine's Day, huh? <laughs> so don't blame it all on us. She said, you want me to stay here with you? I said, no, well, go on to the ladies' meeting. Say, what'd you do, preacher? I watched a basketball game. My nerves were shot. Huh? I just believe God was in control. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Some of you stub, stub your toe on a pebble in your driveway, and you think your leg's falling off. Well, if it falls off, uh, 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 you still, uh, uh, I got God in glory and He's worthy of your praise. Uh, uh, Jesus said it'd be better to enter in heaven halt and maim and lame uh, than, to not, than to be healthy and not get to go to heaven. But we get all tore up and jacked up about everything. Where's our trust in God? He's a rewarder of those that believe that He is. Hmm? When was the last time you just said, God, come what may, I'm just going to hang with you? Hmm? Listen, he's been good to me. He's been a lot better to me than I've been to him. But you can ask her in 30-something years of marriage, 31 years next month of marriage, how many times I've been worried about money. I just believe God's able. Uh, I'm trying to help you with something tonight. What's going to move God's heart to us when we start believing that He's God? It's going to take sorrow. It's going to take sowing. But can I say this? It's going to take supplication. If we're ever going to get a hold of God and God do something, somebody's going to have to pray. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to have to grab the horns of the altar. Brother Sidney Weaver, he, he texts me all the time. Sunday morning. He says, it's, he says, you shuck the corn, I'll shake the horns. In other words, I'm praying for you, preacher. I got the horns of the altar, and I'm praying for you. And I believe he is. Huh? Used to, folks realize they're going to get anywhere with God. It, it started by getting on your knees. And just getting a hold of God. And staying there till God spoke something to your soul. Charles Haddon Spurgeon said this probably about 150 years ago because he'd been dead 130 years. This is what he said 100, 140, 150 years ago. He said, Prayer languages, languishes in many churches. And we're talking 150 years ago. Power in intercession is by no means a common attainment. 150 years ago. Hmm? And meetings for prayer are, as a rule, thinly attended and not much thought of, and not much thought of. Sin abounds, 
Empty profession is common. Hypocrisy is plentiful. And the life of God in the soul is but little esteemed. 150 years ago, when there is a degeneracy of public manners, you may be sure that there has also, that there has also occurred a serious decline of secret devotion. 150 years ago. If it was bad 150 years ago, you multiply it by about a million. That's where we are today. Hmm. Somebody needs to get a hold of God if it's going to move God's heart. towards. A, you know what caused Hannah to have a baby? She got broken, and it moved God's heart. Hmm. God's nigh them of a broken heart and saveth such of a contrite spirit. God resisted the proud, but giveth grace to the humble. It's going to take sorrow, sowing, supplication, but it's going to take service. In verse number 6, we find again, He that goeth forth and weepeth. That's what it says. Bearing precious seed. You know what moves God's heart? When folks are moved to do something for God. Hmm. You know what blessed our church last year more than anything? I told y'all Sunday night, we're, it's the best financially we've ever been. You know why? Stand up. You two stand up. You two stand up. Bella, stand up. You three stand up. Don't think I'm missing anybody. Caleb, stand up. Where you at? You just talked my arm off. These and maybe some more. Natalie, where you at? Stand up. She definitely talked her arms off. <laughs> These for sure, maybe some more. These kids, every Monday night last year, out knocking on doors, passing out tracks, inviting folks to church. You know what moved God's heart? It wasn't us old, uh, old timers beating our chest down to how much we know. It's because these kids want to do something for Jesus. And it touched God's heart. You can sit down, kids. Thank you. Thank you so much. So proud of all of you. What a blessing you were to me last year. And boys used to fight over who got to go with Brother Doug. I was just glad they went. I'd say, bless them, God. Sick them. You know? I'd stand at the sidewalk and let them hit the doors, man. They's going, huh? I'm just trying to help you with something tonight. When you've got a heart to do something for God, it moves God's heart towards us. It takes service. Hmm. You know what's sad? There's some of you used to go out on visitation, don't go anymore. You missed a blessing last year. I'm telling you, it was a blessing Amen. watching these kids get excited for Jesus. Let me say this lastly. Some of you have already, already tuned me out. Huh? It's all right. We DVR'd it. You can go back and watch it later. Huh? <laughs> what will move God's heart is sureness. Look again in verse 6. They that goeth forth, weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with them. And having confidence and assurance and true faith and hope in God moves the heart of God. Hmm? Every time I mount a pulpit, I mount a pulpit expecting to see revival break out. That's my desire. That's why I believe God's going to do it. I don't know when He's going to do it, Brother Sammy, but I believe He's going to send it. Hmm? If I didn't believe God was that big a God, I'd quit preaching a long time ago. Huh? There are certain times He gives me a message, I believe somebody's going to get born again. Now they may not, that's between them and God, but I believe that they're going to get born again. I just come with that assurance, that hope, that excitement that God's going to do something. That's what moves the heart of God. Amen. When we're sure, when we believe that He is going to do something. Too many, Brother Sammy, believes that God can. When we believe God will, then He will. Hmm? God help us realize without him we can do nothing and there's been a whole lot of nothing going on in his name for too long brother Brian I don't know about anywhere else but I know what happens around here I believe God wants to do something we can't control what happens down the street we can't ha control what's going on but we, if we all get tuned in 
and really desire to see God move. Just what can he do, brother? What could he do? Huh? Just look what he's done in your family. What else could he do? Huh? Noreen? I ain't giving up till I see him sitting there. Huh? I believe I believe he's gonna do it. I just believe that. I ain't giving up. I ain't giving up. I just believe he's going to. When we get to where we desire for him to move more than we desire anything else to move in our life, he'll move. We got to want it more than we don't want it. We all say we want to see him move. When we want to see him move more than anything else, then he'll move. And friends, we're way, 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 way past where we need to be to see that happen. We're far too long behind the eight ball. Listen, I don't know how much more time we got. I know God winks at our ignorance, but God doesn't wink at abomination. And abominations going on in our streets in America and being heralded and people are thumbing the nose at God. And I've read in the Bible where that only goes on for so long and then God shows who he really is. I believe God gave us a space of grace the last election. I'm hoping and trusting he gives us another space of grace. But my dear friends, we're going to do something for God. We better do it now. This thing goes the wrong way in, 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 in in November. They'll shut churches down like ours because we're a threat to everything that they're going for. Amen. He'll tell you, I was with him the last election and I made the statement that if it went the other way and Hillary got in, I stayed in St. Lucia. Didn't I say that? Huh? You said, you're crazy. I've done told Jordan, sell everything and meet me in St. Louis. You know what I mean? <laughs> we ain't doing it. I'm here to tell you. Friends, aren't you tired of seeing all the mess go on? You realize the only thing that's going to change is God. You see, I've read in the scriptures where things were as bad or worse and God stepped in. The ladies are doing that Bible study on Jonah. You go study Nineveh, how wicked that was. And God changed it. From the king to the beast, God changed Nineveh. Uh, and you can go and see when things look like there was no hope and God stepped in. Amen. I remember three Hebrews going to a fiery furnace. God was there. Are you listening? He changed that whole nation because of that. And later Cyrus acknowledged the God of heaven as the true God. How are you listening? What would God do in America if just a few folks would truly desire for God to show up. I pray it starts here. And I pray it starts tonight. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. You just mind the Lord. I don't know what it's going to take for us to see how much we need Him. But if you can't look around and see how much we need Him, Lord have mercy. Families are in a mess. Churches are in a mess. A lot of these children have no hope. But we need to get God on the scene. Folks are coming. Folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, O oh God of heaven, Lord, without you we know there is no hope. But Lord, until that trumpet blows, we have hope. Hope for revival. Hope for a change in heart and change in spirit. God, it must begin at the house of God. And God, I realize on this Wednesday night some of the choicest saints that there are here. And God, I believe these folks would like to do something for you, and I believe they'd like to see you move. So God, will you start something here tonight? Lord, may it transform throughout the rest of the church. And then God, may it transform throughout this community, and then ultimately our country. God, may we see many souls come to Christ. God, may we see many families that are, uh, uh, Lord, in a mess made right. God, may we see uh, 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 many uh, uh, places that promote sin shut down. 
God, may we see these agendas for all this wickedness and abomination be uh, uh, turned away and done away with. May we see righteousness reign. and May we see holiness abound. May we see the Lord Jesus exalted and high and lifted up. And may we truly be a Christian nation once again. Lord, I pray as you turn their captivity, you turn our captivity. You'd break the bondage and you'd break the bonds of, 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 uh, that have got people bound. And God, you would certainly bring victory that we truly would rejoice with gladness and joy. That the heathen would certainly take re notice and would proclaim how good God's been. And God, have your way in this invitation. Meet every need of every heart. Certainly, God, for somebody here at unsaved, it wasn't a salvation message, but you can do all things. I pray you'd save them tonight. Bless now. We'll thank you for it. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.